So I hope that you have seen the questions. Now we are going to see the solutions of uh, the uh, semiconductor theory and EDC MCQ video. Okay. So uh, this is a video in which we are preparing for uh, Keltron engineer examination, engineer training examination, also Bark Stiffenry training examination and also ISRO technical assistant examination. Okay. So we are going to see the solutions of questions. Uh, in this video, I have included questions from EDC and semiconductor theory. Okay. So uh, the first question is, a semiconductor has dash temperature coefficient of resistance. So generally what happens is that when uh, the temperature of a semiconductor material is increased, what will happen? Uh, the uh, electrons will tend to break the bone and they will be free and the resistance will be reduced. Right. So uh, some minority carriers will also be generated. So what will generally happen is that as the temperature is increased, the resistance will get reduced. So, as the temperature is increased, the resistance is reduced. This is the case for a semiconductor. So, they are having what temperature coefficient of resistance? They are having negative. Okay. Correct answer is 3 negative is the correct answer. Okay. Next question. The second question. A semiconductor has generally dash valence electrons. Okay. So, the semiconductors generally have four valence electrons. Okay. And these valence electrons, they try to share with the adjacent atom. The other electrons, the, uh, that is the valence electrons of the other atom. So, that is the generally uh, bone structure of a, uh, of a semiconductor. For example, consider silicon. In the outer shell, there are four electrons. So, they will try to share it with the the nearby other four electrons of the other silicon atoms. So, this type of bonding is called covalent bonding. Okay. So, this four electrons, one, two, three, four electrons are of this atom and the other, these electrons are from the other atoms in the crystal. Okay. That is the other uh, sil uh, silicon atoms its valence electrons are being shared. So, this type of bonding is called covalent bonding. This is actually the basics of semiconductor theory. So, these are the electrons 1, 2, 3 and 4. These are the 4 electrons of this silicon atom. The other electrons are shared from the other silicon atoms. Okay. So, if you see how many valence electrons are present uh, for a silicon atom, there is 4 valence electron. Correct answer is option 4, 4. Okay. So, four valence electrons are present in a silicon atom. Okay. Next question. The third question is, the strength of a semiconductor crystal comes from dash. Forces between nuclei, forces between protons, electron pair bonds, none of the above. Just now we have seen the crystal structure. Just now we have seen the bonding. Just now we have seen the electron pair bonds uh, between, the, uh, between one silicon atom and the nearby silicon atom's uh, valence electrons. So, clearly we can see that there is a sharing of electrons which are present in the valence band between the adjacent silicon atoms. Uh, just seek back and see the bonding structure. A silicon atom will share the, the valence electron with the other silicon atoms valence electron. So, there is an electron pair bond happening. Okay. So, correct answer is 3 electron pair bond. Okay. Next question. That is the fourth question. When a pentavalent impurity is added to a pure semiconductor, it becomes dash. A, an insulator. Uh, sorry, it is not A. 1. 1, an insulator. 2, an intrinsic semiconductor. 3, P-type semiconductor. 4, N-type semiconductor. So, what happens when a pentavalent impurity is added to a semiconductor? So, when a pure semiconductor, consider that you are taking a pure semiconductor. So, this is a pure semiconductor and you are going to add a pentavalent impurity. Okay. Pentavalent means they will be having 5 valence electron. That means additionally, generally, uh, normal semiconductors will have 4 valence electrons. Right. So, for a pentavalent, there will be 5 valence electrons. Means, after sharing, one electron will be there, which will be free. So, if you add more and more pentavalent impurities to a pure semiconductor crystal, or a pure semiconductor like this, there will be formation of free electrons more and more. Okay. We only require four electrons for sharing with the 
the silicon atoms present in this pure semiconductor right so we are, uh, since we are adding pentavalent means they are having five valence electrons or five electrons are present in the outermost shell so after sh after covalent bond we have one excess electron so if you add more and more pentavalent means you will get more and more free electrons so the resultant semiconductor is called n type semiconductor okay n type semiconductor will be getting okay now consider that you are going to add a trivalent impurity trivalent means they are having only three electrons in the outermost shell so there is a deficiency of a electron we require four but we have only three so there is a deficiency of an electron and this deficiency of an electron we call it as a hole so here by adding of more and more trivalent impurities these deficiencies will get increased that means the holes or the positive charge is actually getting increased and hence by the adding of trivalent impurities to a pure semiconductor we will create p type so these are the basics of semiconductor theory anyway i am just explaining for those who have uh, have forgot actually these concepts to refresh okay so anyway here the correct answer is 4 that is we will get n type semiconductor okay next question fifth question okay fifth question is addition of pentavalent impurity to a semiconductor create many dash a, uh, one free electron two hole three valence electron d sorry uh, four bound electrons correct answer is when we just now i have explained that when we are more more and more pentavalent impurity we will get more and more free electrons correct answer is one is the correct answer okay i hope the concept is clear next question Sixth question. An n type semiconductor is dash. 1 positively charged, negatively charged, 3 electrically neutral, 4 none of the above. So, here we are actually talking about n type semiconductor crystal. So, a crystal, if you take it, is actually electrically neutral. This question I have actually seen in a lot of question papers. So, many people have a tendency to write it as negatively charged because the question is asking regarding n type semiconductor so the n type semiconductor crystal if you take the crystal is electrically neutral but there are electrons more or plenty but even then the crystal has a structure it is electrically neutral correct answer is three okay next question a hole in a semiconductor is defined as dash a free electron, the incomplete part of an electron pair bond. 3. A free proton. 4. A free neutron. It is not a, a proton or a neutron or an electron. It is just an incomplete part of an electron pair bond. Now consider that there is a silicon. Consider that there is another silicon. There was a bond between these two. I am only uh, just drawing one bond. The other bonds are also, uh, are also there. Just ignore it as of now. Okay. Now we are considering this silicon. So this silicon has shared one electron and taking one electron from this. Okay. So what will happen when there is a when there is some uh, external forces or something applied to this bone? The bond is broke and an electron has jumped out. This was a, an electron. Okay. This was a, earlier an electron. But an electron broke the bond. Consider that this electron broke the bond and is now free. See, it is here. Now there is a deficiency of an electron here. And this deficiency is called a hole. A lot of people has a misconcept about holes. There is nothing called hole. But hole is just a deficiency or a vacancy created by the absence of an electron. Earlier there was a negative charged electron present in this bond. But now it is not present because it is free. So the absence of an electron or a negative charge we take it as positive and this is called a hole. So hole is nothing but it is an absence of an electron. Okay. 
So this correct answer is 2 which is the incomplete part of an electron pair bond. So this is an electron pair bond and this is an incomplete part present now because this electron is free and this is called a hole. Okay, correct answer is 2. Next question. Next question is the leakage current in a crystal diode is due to dash. Okay, now the question is asking uh, regarding diode that is p-n junction diode. So, the leakage current in a crystal diode is due to 1. Minority carrier, 2. Majority carrier, 3. Junction capacitance, 4. None of them. It is actually due to minority carriers. Correct answer is 1. Okay. Leakage current is always created prim uh, primarily due to minority carriers only. Okay. Next question. If the temperature of a crystal diode is increased, the leakage current dash. It, it will increase because we know that crystal diode means it is a semiconductor crystal diode or uh, simply a p-n junction diode. So, a, sem a semiconductor material we are using there, right? So, when we increase the temperature of a semiconductor material, what will happen? The resistance is re uh, reduced and due to which the current will increase, right? So, here the question is again the same concept only. So, the current will increase. Correct answer is 3. Next question. A crystal diode has dash, 1 p-n junction, 2 p-n junctions, 3 p-n junctions, none of them. Crystal diode means normally a p-n junction diode, it is having 1 p-n junction, okay. There is only a single p-n junction, correct answer is 1. Next question. The doping level, the question is actually from Zener diodes. The doping level in a Zener diode is dash due to the dash than uh, dash that of a crystal diode. Okay. So, the doping level, it is regarding the doping level of a Zener diode. It is more than that of a normal diode. So, we know that for a Zener diode, there is more importance to reverse uh, operation or reverse characteristics. So, it is having high doping concentration. Okay. So, the doping concentration is more than that of a crystal diode. Okay. Correct answer is 3. It is more than that of a crystal diode. We have done a detailed video on Zener diodes. It is given in the EDC playlist. So, please do watch, uh, watch that video. Towards the end of the video also, uh, MCQ questions from the Zener diode area also in, uh, include. Okay. So, you will get a clear idea, the concept and also questions. So, please do watch, uh, watch that video. It is given in the EDC playlist. Okay. So, these are the questions that I have included in this video. I am really hoping that you found the questions useful. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, share it with all your friends who is preparing for the BARC examination or Keltron examination or ISRO examinations. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.